Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. This is uh, a, a second video about encoders, encoders 2, we'll call it. It's based on the first one. It was just a sl small continuation. And this is also a revised video because the um, way things have been done have been changed. The uh, FTC SIM.org has been updated. So if this is your first one, I would suggest going back to the list of uh, tutorials and seeing how to get started. I've already logged in and I've already gone to number one in movement called line. And um, this one isn't specifically for um, using encoders, but it's a nice simple one. And I like to use uh, it to demonstrate a bunch of different things such as sensors and so forth. Uh, and now I'm going to use it for encoders. So this is kind of the code we have here that we left off with. I'm just going to quickly review it. I've set the left motor direction to reverse so that it'll spin in the same direction as the right motor. Uh, if I don't do that, it's just going to spin in circles. Uh, the second thing I've done now is with the left motor, because I'm going to use encoders, I'm setting the run mode to run using encoders. And then I do the same thing for the right motor because it has an encoder on that motor as well. And then as I did in the first video, I'm showing that the mode is also being set to run to position. So I have some choices here. When I click on this, you can see that I'm going to use it to run to a certain position uh, that I'm going to put in the next two lines so that it's very, very accurate. So in this, uh, these uh, last two before, uh, before it starts, I've set the motor, the target positions to 900 and 900. If you were watching the last one, it had been revised even after I did that one. And the number I had in there, I think was 5,000 or 4,000. And that actually takes me too far. So I've revised it because I want to stop part way through to demonstrate uh, something else. And uh, so it's 900 ticks. These particular motors, which are uh, the basic Tetrix motor, they have uh, 1440 ticks is one revolution of the motor's axle. Okay, so one re revolution of the wheel. And you can figure out by using a meter stick or a yardstick and putting it on the floor. When you do this, exactly how, the, how much that is. You can even figure out using their circumference of the wheels as well and seeing how far it goes to determine that. Anyways, the next, the last thing I had done in the last video was set the motor speed the motor power to 50% of its max power. So let's just test it out again. We'll run it. I'm going to save it. So when I go to run, you'll see that it goes part way and it stops. And so what I want to demonstrate right now is, again, I'm just going to go on a straight line, but what I'd like to demonstrate is that, um, you might want to go a certain distance. You might want to turn and then go a little bit more using your encoders. And uh, one of the ways to do that is to actually stop and reset encoders. So that's what this one is about. It's about doing this. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, a sleep block in here, just just so you can see that it actually does stop. All right. And then what I'll do is I'm going to put in going up to actuators and to DC motor. And I'm going to get this again, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add a new one in. And the one I'm going to put in now is I want it to stop and reset the encoder. So if I don't do that, then the encoders are already at 900 by the time it gets to this point. And then they're going to continue from that point. So, which I could do, but I actually want to demonstrate this other part. So I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to change the uh, left motor, which I often forget to the right motor so that both of them are going to get reset. And then I'm going to run to position again. So I'm going to just duplicate that one and bring it down and duplicate it and change it to the right motor. I'm just going to get rid of this because I don't really need it. So I'm just going to create myself a little bit more room, then put in the right motor. And then I'm going to do the target position again, but I'm going to change it from 900 to something smaller just to, to demonstrate. And I'll do that again, duplicate it, and I'll put it in there. I'm going to just change it to like 
uh, 200. You'll see it move, but it won't go very far, and that's my point. So there we go. So I can I can reset it, and I can run it. It pauses for a second, and then it goes forward. Okay, so that's what it does. That's what I wanted it to do. Okay, uh, and uh, you can see how it skewed off the side because even though I keep saying it, I forgot to change motor left to motor right there. So let's try it again. So there, and you can see one second maybe is not enough. I'm going to put down uh, three seconds, 3000 milliseconds to get it to pause. Let's see if it'll do that. So there we go. Pauses, pauses, and then it goes a little bit more. Okay. So that's the demonstration. So again, it's not really that useful in this particular instance. Um, but if I was going to turn it and I had a bigger playing field here uh, during an autonomous mode and I wanted to go a certain distance and then go another little bit more after it turns and then maybe turn again and go straight because I'm going around an obstacle, this would be a way to be much, much more accurate. And that's that's kind of what it's all about. Now, you might say, okay, what what can I actually set it to a negative? Let's say, let's see if we can get it to go backwards. I'm going to set it to negative 200 and see if it'll go up to 900 and then move back. So I'm just going to save it, reset it, run it, and let's see what happens. It pauses and then it goes back. So there's another thing you can do. Now, if I don't, if I don't reset this, I'm going to just set it back to 200. If I don't, I'm going to disable the two blocks that, um, stop and reset it so i'm going to uh, disable this and i just want to see what's going to happen what will it do let's see so it goes to 900 and then it goes back it goes back 700 so it's going back to uh to 200 so that's another way to go in reverse as well um, i just think it's a little bit more efficient a little makes a little bit more sense if we use the stop and reset encoders. I hope you found this useful. I hope if you have any questions that you'll contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org with any comments that you might have about the FTC SIM as I'm starting to get a lot more. And I hope you and your students or your team find it useful. Thanks and talk to you again soon.